Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Qian. Uh, I'm a grad student from U Chicago. Uh, so like just before my talk, I want to have a spe special thanks to the conference because it really helped my, uh, to push my advice early on uh, to do the edits uh, and to get the paper out like, literally like 20 hours before the talk. <laughs> so OK, so here we are. We have the archive number. So uh, please check it out if you are interested. Um, so to give a brief motivation, um, to give a brief motivation, like Bazzani codes provide a highly efficient way of doing quantum error correction um, by leveraging uh, the infinite dimensional Hilbert space of a single Bazzani mode. Um, and in fact, like robust quantum memories uh, beyond the break even point um, have been experimentally demonstrated uh, for various Bazzani codes, uh, including the CAD codes, the binomial codes, and, and the GKB codes. However, it's pretty challenging to extend these Bazzani qubits. Um, beyond the memory level, because it's really hard to do uh, photon logic operations uh, on them. I hope you also get this uh, motivation from previous talks, the uh, Shraddha's talk. Um, so uh, a paradigmatic way of doing um, operation on these bosonic modes is to uh, use some qubit ancilla. See, for instance, in the standard circuit QED platform, you can dispersively couple your cavity uh, to this um, uh, to a transmog. Uh, and then you can just control this bosonic mode by driving, uh, driving this ancilla. So however, the problem is, uh, is that um, for this hybrid qubit oscillator system, um, this no ancilla tends to be very noisy, uh, and the ancilla errors tend to propagate back to the bosonic modes and uh, uh, compromise the encoded information there. Uh, for instance, if you want to do some uh, phase rotation on this bosonic mode, uh, con uh, condition on this qubit state, and if it's somehow like uh, the qubit decay in the middle, then you will have a uh, large random phase rotation on your bosonic mode, which will destroy the, the information there. Um, and similarly, if you want to do this control displacement operator, uh, which is used for, say, stabilizing a GKP qubit, uh, again, the qubit error will uh, destroy, uh, will, will cause a large displacement on the bosonic mode, and again, uh, destroy the information. So in addition, all these operations are not photon in the sense that the logical error rates are uh, all limited by the first order of the qubit error. In this case, just a T1 time of your transmog. Um, and in other words, you're not really uh, uh, enjoying the benefits of Bazzani error correction. So uh, through this talk, we will try to address these challenges. Um, and specifically, we will design uh, universal um, and still assisted uh, Bazzani operations in this hybrid architecture um, that are fully error corrected. Uh, in particular, they are photonic to those detrimental and errors. Um, so the key result we have is the construction of a universal set of error correct operations uh, for, um, for some set of rotation symmetric codes, uh, such as the four lag cat qubit. Uh, so I'm not going to say too much about this cat code, uh, because Victor has that, done an excellent job uh, in like, introducing this qubit. So basically, the code words is a superposition of four coherent states here. So we refer to this coherent states as just the four lags. Um, and then, uh, particularly, um, all these constructed gates can tolerate a single photon loss uh, and arbitrary and still have fault. So we, we can achieve uh, first order fault tolerance. Uh, and in particular, uh, these schemes are practical; they are fast. So, like in terms of physical operation, uh, we we, ca we can just use this, this architecture where we can use the simple like dispersive coupling between an oscillator and the qubit. In addition, we will use this beam reader uh, interaction uh, to do these two qubit logic gates. So as shown in the previous talks, all these operations, physical interactions, have been experimentally demonstrated with very high uh, strengths and high qualities. Um, and these constructions will lead to hardware efficient concatenated quantum microaction scheme. Uh, in particular, we'll have a fully error correct base qubit uh, that uses only a single bosonic mode and three level ancilla, which features the hardware efficiency of bosonic error correction even in the like, full photon setting. Uh, and because of this building uh, bosonic error correction, we expect that the, the gate error can be in the range of 10 to minus 4 uh, to 10 to minus 3, which is far below um, the threshold uh, for the second le level code, the uh, surface code. Um, and then one of emphasize that the errors we get is uh, without poster selection, which is different from, say, using the Eraser qubits where you can only do error detection, so therefore you have to do the poster selection to, to get really high quality gates. Um, and then before, uh, like, in order to get this uh, exciting results, um, I will we'll introduce some uh, advanced quantum control techniques uh, first to, to reach these four tolerance uh, goals. Okay, 
So the quantum control task we consider is in analogy with the photon circuit design uh, for qubit electronicals. Um, so for those who are, who you are familiar with this photon is the qubit um, community, um, if you use some bad circuits, um, and then like a single qubit fault can propagate to multiple qubit errors, and therefore the circuit is not photonic. And in contrast, if you use some good circuits, this transversal circuit, a single fault can only propagate to a single qubit error, and therefore it's, it is photonic. Um, but if, uh, for this talk, uh, we will need to consider um, some continuous uh, evolution generated by some Hamiltonian. Um, and so the task here is uh, it's not about discrete circuits, and instead we need, really need to consider uh, those four torrents Hamiltonian, but still in the sense that like small physical faults only propagate to small data errors. So it's in a sim similar spirit as the, the, the four torrent circuit design. Okay, so the major uh, quantum control technique we'll use is the so-called pass inhibitance. So, um, so recall that we are considering this ancilla assist operation. So here we, we initialize some Q data ancilla in a specific ancilla state, and then let the ancilla interact with the bosonic mode, uh, where some entangling Hamiltonian, and then measure ancilla in a, in a specific basis. Uh, in addition, we'll consider some ancilla error in the form of uh, some uh, like Limbla jump operator for this uh, master equation. Um, because we have these ancilla errors, in general, this bosonic mode will experience some very messy, noisy, like complicated CPTP map. However, the point is that if you can design your Hamiltonian carefully, you can make this uh, like channel to be a purely unitary channel. And then we'll call this pass independence because um, the, the idea is that uh, this bosonic mode will undergo a deterministic unitary evolution independent of the ancilla, uh, independent of the passes that the ancilla took. So for instance, the ancilla, we, uh, the ancilla could follow this green coherent evolution and then interrupt it by some quantum jump. Or it could follow this uh, orange evolution uh, coherently to the end. But as long as they end up in the same state, then these different passes will all produce the same unitary. So um, that's basically what we, why we call it like pass Um If you think about carefully, this, this, this property is very natural because see, if you are doing the experiments, that basically means that you, you don't really care about what's going on in the middle of the process. You could have arbitrary errors, but you don't really care. What we, what we only need to do is that you just look at the measurement outcome, and once you know the measurement outcome, you know like which unitary, determinist unitary that's applied to the system. So from, from the photonics perspective, that essentially means that there's no error propagation from the ancilla to the bosonic mode, because there's no information lost to the environment as long as you can tr keep track of the ancilla measurement outcome. And, uh, and because of this restriction of the like, new error propagation, um, this pass inhibitance is very hard to, to implement in practice. So fortunately, we'll show that this properties is not exactly requ what's required by fault tolerance. So think about this. Suppose your bosonic mode is now encoding some bosonic code, say the four cat qubits, that can handle some errors. And then now, uh, like, even if you your conditional channel is not a purely unitary channel, but instead it's some pure unitary channel up to some small correctable errors, then this channel is still a correctable channel, then you are still for tolerance. And based on this idea, we can actually generalize this passing limit idea to the so-called GPI control um, by essentially allowing those conditional channels uh, to, be, uh, to be really some like error correctable uh, channels with some uh, correctable errors in there. Um, so to sum up, or the take home here is that uh, if you can design operations that satisfy this GPR condition, then you are guaranteed uh, to be fault turned against those ancillaries, which are typically uh, messy. Okay, so let's give a simple example on this uh, like GPI operation. So here we consider this so-called snapgate, um, which applies a number-dependent phase shift on your bosonic mode. Um, so you can implement this by introducing a three-level ancilla, uh, say here with G, E, and F uh, states. And then in this some rotating frame, these this states are degenerate. Um, but now we, we dispersely couple uh, this ancilla to a bosonic qubit, uh, bosonic mode. Um, so what this does is that those G, uh, E, and F states uh, get uh, like photon number dependent phase shift, um, depending on the how many photons you have in the carrot. And then because now you have the like frequency difference, then you can basically like up apply different drives to a qubit with different frequencies and different phases. Um, and then to implement this desired operation. Don't worry if, it, if you don't get this energy diagram, uh, but the important thing is that if you move to some interaction picture, um, the Hamiltonian uh, is in this special form where you kind of drive your ancilla from the G to F state, 
while applying this target unitary S. And then uh, we'll consider some ancillaries, including the ancillar decay from F to E, and the ancillar decay from E to J, and some arbitrary ancillar defacing that's diagonal in these spaces. And then for the first order fault tolerance, what really matters is only this uh, like ancillar decay from F to E. And in the interaction pictures, uh, it becomes time dependent and it's associated with some uh, phase rotation on the boson decay mode. Um, that, that, that depends on the time that this jump happens. Um, so what matters is that if you, um, if you have a perfect k mansion, which means that this kf and the ke, these dispersive coupling strengths are matched for this f and the e levels, then this operator becomes time independent. And then what happens is that, is that if you calculate this conditional channel, so your, your qubit starts from the g state. And if you end up with the g state, you know that there's nothing uh, being applied to the cavities, identity channel. And if you, the, 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 the ancilla is not in the F state, you know that you successfully implemented the, the snap gate. And the slightly natural thing is that even if a single ancilla decay that happens, um, then you will, like, the ancilla will decay from F to E state, then you obtain this E measurement outcome. But the thing is that um, this system still undergoes this desired S unitary, because here you can compose this blue edge with this uh, red edge and still, still get the S unitary. So that's the idea of a passing independent. Okay, but the things get complicated when you don't have the perfect can matching. So if you have a finite can mismatch, then now you no longer have this PI property. It's necessarily because now if your single uh, ancilla decay happens and then you measure the ancilla in the end, now instead of the, have a determinist unitary, you actually have some uh, 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 unitary up to some extra phase rotation because now you have like some uh, like jump induced phase rotation on a bosonic mode. That's not deterministic. But the, but the point is that uh, if you have now in bosonic mode is encoded some bosonic code, then at, um, that can correct the small defacing errors, then this operation is still GPI, and therefore it's still like a fault tolerant against uh, those ancillary errors. Okay, so now we try to uh, rigorously connect this GPI idea to fault tolerance. So the high level idea is you can combine pieces of uh, these GPI operations to get a, a whole like a full time gadget for your bosonic code. Um, so here, um, uh, so here, so I'm showing like like several pieces of the ancillary system operations that satisfy the GPI. And because they are GPI, then they are full times against those ancillary errors. Um, now the remaining thing is that in the full full time setting, you also need to consider some like bosonic errors that on, that happen on the bosonic code. So um, to to achieve full times against this bosonic errors, we usually need to uh, have some extra uh, uh, ingredients for the photonics. For instance, if you can make this Hamiltonian to commute with this uh, physical bosonic errors, then those errors basically like, commute through the dynamics um, and then they do not get amplified. Therefore, uh, these operations are not also a photon against the bosonic errors. So this idea of, like, uh, of, of commuting the errors through the dynamics is called the error transparency idea. And in addition, you also need to apply some adaptive control like between different uh, operations to make the whole gadget for tolerance. So to sum up, if we have uh, GPI operations that are tolerance against ancillaries, then you can basically combine them with several diff other ingredients such as error transparency or more general error closure and some adaptive control to reach for tolerance. And the, late, and the later like, ingredients are typically easier to achieve than, than the GPI uh, condition. Okay, let's consider a simple example where we try to do um, a photon ZX, logical ZX rotation for the uh, four leg cat qubit. So recall that uh, the four leg cat qubit has a special structure um, in the code words. So the zero and one code words occupy different photon number subspace. And in particular, the zero code word occupy this zero modular four subspace, which is zero, four, eight, twelve, so that's the center. Uh, well, the logical one occupies this two mod four subspace, say two, six, um, uh, 10, uh, 14, et cetera. And because of this uh, number separation, then we can just imp apply this ZX rotation by applying a phase to this two module four uh, photon number subspace. Okay, so this basically implies that uh, uh, th this can be done using the step gate um, that, that I introduced before. And because you have the GPI idea, then this, this case are photon against the, the ancillary errors. In addition, we can make this case to be photon uh, error transparent against the single photon loss, the bosonic errors, by uh, simply modifying some Hamiltonian. That's easy to, to realize. 
In addition, we can gr uh, group these elements together and apply some quantum co uh, adaptive control um, to get this photon gadget. Um, okay, so now we can get to this uh, photon construction of the gates. Um, so here uh, we're constructing this Folag cat, and, and we construct, construct a universal set of error corrected ga uh, gadgets using uh, uh, like uh, that that contains error correction, uh, single qubit uh, rotation, uh, two qubit rotation, and, and some state preparation as measurements. And the actual architecture we consider is again um, this like a. Uh, uh, we use a single bosonic mode that's coupled to a single uh, qubit to get one logic uh, um, uh, qubit. In addition, we use this beam sphere to do this two qubit logic operation. So all these operations are cheap experimentally. Um, and then uh, some of the operations are, are, are easy to do because um, they, they commute with the, uh, they, they preserve the excitation number. Therefore, we can just use the GPS stamp gate and some simple parity measurement to do it. So I'm trying to get some like, uh, uh, okay, now we are looking to more complicated operations such as the ZX rotation. So the ZX rotation for the four leg is simply implemented by applying a face to this horizontal leg, which is the plus state. Okay, the way we do it is that to combine uh, the step gate with displacement operator, um, and then specifically um, uh, the idea is that we start from the four leg cat uh, in the face space, this is a weakness function, and then we displace the cat so that one of the lag, the left lag, is around the vacuum. And then we apply the step gate to, to apply this phase shift to the neighborhood vacuum to, to kind of phase shift this left lag. And then we uh, displace the cat um, the other direction so that the right lag is now around the vacuum. Then they will again apply this uh, snap gate to apply uh, the phase shift to the right lag. And then finally we display them back to the original uh, uh, place. And then this horizontal lag now have this natural phase apply. So that's exactly the X operation we, we have. And because we're using like, uh, like GPS snap gate here and also the displacement also for times, then uh, this whole uh, gadget is for time. And it also importantly, they are, are transparent to uh, any input error with a single photon loss and some small, uh, small phase rotations. Okay. And then we, we can use similar ideas to do that, this X basis measurement. Um, um, so because of the time constraint, I'll, I'll skip it for now. But the idea is, 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 is actually similar to this X rotation. You actually use this ge uh, like, uh, geometric locality of your, your cat in the phase space to do some interfere, uh, interference between them. Okay, so another interesting operation is this X X rotation, uh, which, is up, uh, uh, which is like done by, um, uh, so you have like two cats, and then you can do this X X rotation by applying a natural phase when both of the legs are horizontal or both of the legs are vertical. Basically, you only apply phase when the legs are kind of aligned, either horizontally or vertically. So the way we do it is use a beam thread induction to mix the two uh, input modes, and then we we'll apply this uh, phase shift to apply a phase, uh, to, 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 to apply a phase to vacuum, and then we like undo the beam thread. So what this does is that if you look at the coherent state, um, the, if you have two coherent states as input, and then you will get the same coherent state, but like you will get natural phase if and only if these two coherent states have the same amplitude, and they are either phase aligned or anti-aligned. That's exactly the op uh, if operation you want to do for the follow cat, because like, this, this, like we, tr we try to align the, the, the leg of the cat and apply some phase. And also, uh, the important thing that is that this gadget is error transparent to the input loss and defacing errors. Okay, putting this gadget together, we can actually come up with the natural error correction uh, gadget. So tra traditionally, when you do the error correction for this rotation symmetric code, you only need to keep track of the, the parity. So the idea is that those code words are encoded in the even parity subspace of bosonic mode. And a single four loss just changes the parity to the odd parity. And if you can detect this parity, then you know the loss happens. And uh, you don't have, really have to do the correction because you can just do the parity frame, uh, uh, parity frame update. Okay, so, um, but the issue of, of that compared to the stabilizer code is that you cannot do that for many, many runs. Because if you have a single photon loss, then you will actually have a deterministic energy decay of your bosonic modes that, that eventually like, uh, shrink your energy to the vacuum. So as indicated here, if you have a, like, in, a cat input, then because of the energy loss, then you always, like, the mean photon number will decay to the vacuum, and the amplitude of the cast gets really small when you do many, many runs. So to, to, to resolve this, we came up with the uh, teleportation gadget that essentially pumps energy into the system. 
So this teleportation gadget utilizes the, the, the single or two qubit rotations that, that we had earlier. And then because these individual components are four times, then this error correction uh, teleportation gadget is also four times. As shown here, um, like once you apply this teleportation gadget, you successfully repump the energy into the system and restore the amplitude of the cat. Okay, in addition, this error, uh, teleportation gadget is also error correction gadget that correct the single uh, photon loss and some phase rotations. Uh, and I want to emphasize that all these experimental, uh, these simulations uh, uh, is done using very realistic experimental parameters. Um, and uh, um, so this like memory experiments can go uh, far below the, the brick even line. So they are, they are very realistic. Uh, so finally, I want to convince you with some numeric evidence that um, uh, numeric results that uh, so all these logic errors suppress to second order of the physical error, even if we have some finite can match in, in, the, in your physical system. Um, and of course, we can really prove that um, uh, as well. And what I want to emphasize is that logic errors can be far below 10 to minus 3 um, using current experimental parameters, which means that um, so you, you can really use this error correct qubits uh, for calculating error correction that's far below the, the, the current error threshold to reduce the overhead. Um, so in, at the end, that basically gives you a highly efficient calculating error correction architecture. So again, where you, each of the base error correct logic qubits only use a single bosonic mode and a three-level ancilla, and you only need like some be simple beam filter couplings between these bosonic modes to do the surface code experiments. Okay, to sum up, um, we, in this talk, we integrate uh, GPI quantum control techniques with bosonic error correction to achieve for tolerance in the hybrid uh, architecture. Uh, and using these tools, we construct a universal set of uh, error correct gadgets for the four lag cat qubits. And what I want to emphasize is that this cat, four lag cat qubits has been there for uh, seven years, but it's only in the memory level. Um, and the reason is that it's really hard to do logical gates. Now, hopefully, our uh, results uh, bri uh, bridge this gap. Um, and then uh, all these uh, results lead to a highly efficient concatenated quantum correction architecture. Uh, using fully error corrected base qubits. Um, and uh, uh, in the end, I want to emphasize that this scheme, although I used the four lag cat example, but the idea here can actually be applied to other rotation symmetry codes as well. As long as uh, like this, this base code was, has a, some locality property in the phase space. For instance, you can also apply it to the binomial code. And also, you can apply it to the, this idea to high order for tolerance, not just second order for tolerance. Um, so for instance, if you use the four, six lag cat, you can correct two photon losses. And now if you use a four-level four uh, ancilla, then you can suppress everything to the third order, which can give you even better uh, error credit qubits as a base qubit. Um, OK, with that, I'll conclude my talk and thank our collaborators, especially uh, my advisor, Liang, for the support. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the very interesting talk. Uh, so about the definition of fault tolerance, for qubits, it's clear because like, you know, we have the result that everything is like either bit, flip or fa uh, bit flips and face flips. But if you're using three-level system, how is this modified? Right, so I guess the question is about the error model. Uh, when you consider three-level system or in general bosonic mode, Yes, so I guess in our paper, we gave a more uh, rigorous framework of how to quantify these errors and how to quantify the error propagation. But the high-level idea is that, is that for the three-level transmog, you can, you can still consider this discrete faults in the, in the, in the form of like single decay uh, and a single defacing. So it's, uh, it's basically not SU2, but it's still like a discrete fault. Um, but the, for the bosonic modes, it's more complicated. It's, it involves some uh, like, uh, like phase rotation errors. But there's still some way to, to introduce some natural error matrix to quantify the size of the error. And the, the, the essential idea is still like a small force propagate to small data errors. Um, yeah, um, they you. are provided in more detail in our paper. Uh, so you, when you do X rotation, you first displace your code. So the, in the intermediate step in your X rotation, the code is no longer protect the quantum loss. Is that right? Um, so yeah, the question is that um, if we have a, 
like if you displace the cat that that kind of destroy this rotation symmetry, uh, you might think that okay, it can no longer correct the single phone loss because uh, this this correction for the lo loss errors usually depends on the rotation symmetry. Um, but in fact, what we show is that it's not the case. Um, the idea is that you can simply commute with this loss with the displacement. Uh, it's almost error transparent to the displacement, so the loss uh, is only propagate to. Uh, a loss plus some constant, which is still some uh, correct error. So you can still correct the, the loss in the middle. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so thanks for the nice talk. Um, I'm wondering, can you maybe comment on the scalability of your protocol? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So, so I guess, on the experimental side, I'll defer that to our maybe experimental friends here. Um, but I, we do do have some architecture in mind. So it's it's really again again like a single mode bosonic code will never get you to the ten to minus fifteen logic areas. So at the end of the day, you still have to concatenate with some cubic code. So you still have maybe like some two D architecture where um, you have to do the surface code experiment. But the point is that um, it, now each of the base qubits is now replaced with some bosonic code that is already has some layer protection. It's already error protect or, or error correct qubits. So you can have very like low free logic errors for each of the qubits. Um, and then importantly, like uh, in the full photon setting, it's, it's essentially just a single bosonic mode with one extra ancilla for the base qubit. So you don't really need very large overhead to, to have this like bottom layer error correction. Uh, yeah, all right, thank you. <laughs> 